what you got here are two foci, right? And if I want to model for myself, where did my black go? Here it is. If I want to model for myself a series of points where if you add up the distance from here to here, you'll get a constant. Here's my constant, the length of my string. Okay, let's call this eight units, all right? I have no, no idea how long it is, okay? And do you agree, for instance, I'm just gonna start really, really slow, right? Do you agree that, for instance, that point right, this is actually harder than how many points, that point there, right? I'm going to even do some dotted lines here. That point right there, and let me get another color. Get another color. This point over here. Do you agree, right, that those two points have the they exhibit this property, right? If I add them up, the sum of those two lengths is just is just what this string is, right? I'm just moving it around. Okay. So I tried to practice, but I still find it quite hard. Let's see what happens if we trace out the locus of those points. Right? So I'm gonna start from over start from here. Let's see if this will work. Okay. That's so cool. Uh, I got pretty close. You get the idea. So, so, conclusion, bring string and blue tack to your next exam. <laughs> I've been having so much trouble drawing ellipses. Why didn't I choose? Now, what have we just established, okay? We have shown that we started with, how do we, how do we start with the equation of the ellipse? We started with the parabola. And then we said, let's muck around with the proportions, the eccentricity, right? So in other words, we had not just PS in here, but we also had PD. We crunched the algebra and out popped out the equation. This is a whole different way of doing things, right? And this, by the way, is what makes the whispering gallery work. Does it make sense, right? The reason why, if you're standing here and you whisper to the person standing here, the reason that it works is because all of the sound waves that are coming from you are going to travel the exact same distance no matter where they bounce on the walls or the archway of the whispering gallery, right? So being that they travel the same distance, the sounds arrive at the same time, right? At the same instance because in that space, sound is going to travel at that rate. And so they arrive at you rather than scramble, which is what everyone in here will hear, right? They will hear exactly crystal clear even if you whisper. Okay, so therefore, now we can make a heading. <laughs> what have we just established, okay? What this is, is an alternative locus definition for the ellipse. It is a whole different way of arriving at the equation of an ellipse and at noticing one of its most critical properties, okay? Now, I want you to pause. Uh, we, we did all of this through like proper actual numbers, right? I said that it would be substantially <coughs> easier. You really actually do need to do this algebraically because then you will see that this 8 is not a coincidence, right? It's not just 8 randomly. Now, if you look carefully, you might be able to guess at what 8 is and what connection it has to the number that I've got here. Now, if you if you really, really intuitive, you'll see here's A, right? This is 4 squared and this is... Um, 9, which is 3 squared. Okay. Now, why is it that the 4 squared comes into play? Why, why is it that the 4 is what ends up coming out in my factorization? Because when you make the directrix and the foci, like the only thing that you talk about is A. Very good. It's all about the major axis, right? Um, you've got your, well, in this case, we didn't deal with the directrix, but it's still the same thing. I've got plus or minus A, E, comma, <laughs> 0, right? As you see, the major axis is where all the action is happening. Okay. So this guy, in fact, here is not just 8 by coincidence, it is in fact 2a. And that is an important result to prove. Now I'm going to come around to you guys shortly. Because this is all numbers, right, a lot of stuff simplified out that when it's algebra, doesn't simplify out. They're just terms and they don't, they don't coalesce. They're not like terms. You have to do a lot of massaging of the terms. And your proof ends up about... About that long. Now, that doesn't look too long, but a lot of the steps, and I'll come around and show you this in a second, a lot of the steps are like, why would you do that? Like, how on earth did you know to do that? Like, what made you do that particular algebraic simplification? And the answer is, when mathematicians go through this and they're like, huh, pattern, there must be a pattern in here. Then when you go to the 
abstract, the algebra, you're like, okay, I'm searching for something. I'm not doing simplification like at random. I'm, I'm after something specific, so that guides the process, just like a true identity when you're solving it. Okay? So I'll come around and show that to you. But this property here, let's put a big box around it. PS. Okay. It is oft forgotten because people focus on the other locus definition for the ellipse, the main one. But this is, and I hope you can see, it is beautifully simple. Right? And so you therefore can get lots of geometric insights out of it uh, because of how easy it is. Right? Um, some of the questions in 4.1 take advantage of. All right, now, like I said, that's all of the basic stuff for an ellipse. Hooray! Uh, we will revisit the ellipse when we have a look at, we, got, we know, and you can probably guess at this, right? If I give you the unit circle, right, I can state any point on the circumference in Cartesian terms. Right? So being that this is the unit circle, what's the equation of the unit circle? X Good. So in Cartesian terms, I would state this as x comma... Uh, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y squared, and the plus or minus depends on whether I'm on the top semicircle or the bottom, right? So that's in Cartesian terms. But of course we know, it's not the only way you can do it, how else would we do it? Yeah, we use cos and sine. So that is the way we would parametrically express it. And we can do the same thing for the ellipse. In fact, because the ellipse and the circle are so closely related, they're almost identical. Okay? We will come back to that a bit later on when we're a bit further into conics. But for now, hooray, ellipse is done.